G'day, I'm James, and welcome to Straight Up Curriculum Math in the 21st century. Today we'll talk about graphing rational functions, rational equations, rational expressions. I'm going to do a couple of examples, and I'll do the first one today. Namely, it's going to be this one. Please sketch a graph of this rational equation, y equals 3x minus 2 over x minus 1. So this looks like a fraction, like a rational number here, except I've got polynomials for the numerator and denominator, a rational expression. All right, great. Uh, great, really. OK, let's see. Really? Um, you know what? I'm a citizen of the 21st century, and I know there are all the tools out there available to me as a citizen of the 21st century to do this sort of thing. If the goal is to get a picture of the graph of this, here's the smartest thing you can do. You can just go to Desmos or Wolfram Alpha or something in your graphing calculator and just type that thing in and get a graph of the picture. Use technology. That's smart. That's what any smart person would do in this day and age. So if the goal is to get a graph, use technology and you'll get a graph. Fabulous. Done. End of story. Love it. We're done. But then you also say to yourself, okay, but there's going to be more to this than that. Obviously the point is not to get the picture. I mean, we'll get the picture in the end, but that's not actually the point of this exercise. Maybe the point is about different skills in the 21st century, namely, as a little intellectual exercise to help train you to develop some confidence and some agility and some flexibility in problem solving. In problem solving, maybe it's about the thinking, not about getting the answer. In which case, all right, I'll, I'll buy that. Because I have all sorts of problems in my life, and I'd love to have some confidence in solving them. Problem solving is a good thing. So I'm going to use this as a little small, quirky example to help me with developing problem solving skills in general. In which case, I will gladly sketch a graph of that thing, except I look at it and I'm really nervous. It looks horrible. It still looks horrible. Even though I've sort of bought into the argument I might try it, I'm still scared. In fact, that's the first step to solving any problem in maths or in life. Be your honest human being self and have an honest human reaction to it and acknowledge it. I'm scared. I'm going to say it out loud. This scares me. I've, this gives me the heebie-jeebies. I don't want to do it because I'm nervous. I'm too nervous. Great. That's the first step to solving any problem. Just acknowledge your human relationship with it. And if you're scared, be scared. Say you're scared. If you're nervous, say you're nervous. If you like, don't know what to do, say I don't know what to do. If you say I don't care, be empathetic. Whatever it is, honestly acknowledge that emotion. Because step two is, if there's a problem fa facing you in life, you still want to make some progress towards it. So step two is, take a deep breath and do something, anything, anything to help you take a first step forward to probably attending to that, probably attending to that problem, if you can. Now this is hard because I am scared, I acknowledge that, but I'm still going to try to do something to take me forward nonetheless. Anything. Anything, and I mean literally anything. Um, you might want to do something irrelevant to the problem. You might just, you know, and I put it aside and go read a book for an hour or something, who knows what. Or you might want to do something right now. In fact, I'm going to do one thing right now. So I'm being asked to sketch the graph. I could at least do this, draw a set of axes. Woo! I've done something. It's something. Any step forward is a step forward. I'm, I'm going with that. That's good. And then I look at this and think, okay, all right, so can I take this a little bit further? Um, you know, I, I, I keep staring, you see my brain keeps doing this. I see this 3x minus 2. I don't like that 2. That 2 is annoying because I can imagine, imagine this. What if it was really 3x minus 3 over x minus 1? Wouldn't that be much nicer? Do you see, my brain says, look, I don't like the problem given to me. I'm going to just change it if I can. If I change the minus 3 here, it'd be 3 times x minus 1 over x minus 1, and basically it'd be 3, I guess most of the time. I guess equals, x equals 1 itself is a bit scary there, but basically, if, I, if it was a negative 3 there, y is just the graph 3. Woohoo! With some iffiness at x equals 1. That would be great. That would be great. In fact, in fact, this is what it means to be, operate like a mathematician. There's one fundamental skill that mathematicians do all the time, which is relevant for maths and relevant for life. It's called, I know, make it happen. If there's something in life you want, just actually make it happen, but then deal with the consequences of making that choice. For example, I really do want that to be a 3, 3x three minus 3 over x minus 1. I really want negative 3 there, not negative 2. So I've just made it happen. But I have to deal with the consequences because that changes the question. It's really not negative 3 there, it's really negative 2. The way I can de deal with that is tack on a plus 1. And that still technically keeps it as negative 2. All right, all right. But at least I can now see my 3x minus 3 of x minus 1 and my 1 over x, and 1 over x minus 1. So this is really... 3 plus 1 over x minus 1. Got that? All right, all right. I don't know if that's helpful, but I did something. I don't know if it's relevant. Uh, let me just clean the board a bit. So, so let's see. Can we just write that over here neatly? y equals 3 plus 1 over x minus 1. 
actually, do you know what? I do like this. I do like this because I know, I know that in uh, standard curriculum, the first rational expression we have everyone uh, plot a graph of is this basic rational one. Y equals one over X. So you put in some data values, like when X is 10, Y will be one tenth. When X is 100, Y equals 100th. When X is a million, one million. So it actually gets like small positive values, bigger, bigger X, smaller, smaller values of Y. X equals one, one one-th. X equals 0.1, Y equals a 10. X equals 0.01, Y equals 100. And you'll see if you plot some points after a while, you get a graph that looks like that on the positive side and start doing with negative numbers as well, as well and you get a sort of hyperbolic graph thing like that. There's a graph of Y equals one over X. So that becomes like burnt in one's brain as one does school maths. And I'm seeing, I've basically got the same thing over here. It's basically that graph staring me in the face right now. Now, let me, let me tease that apart. What, why does my brain say that? Well, let's look at y equals one over x. We know that x equals zero is dangerous. You can't put anything at x equals zero because one over zero doesn't make sense. And we also see like this you know, limiting horizontal line here uh, where the graph seems to get more and more positive, more, smaller, 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 smaller values, smaller, smaller, smaller values on the negative side. So we've got these things called asymptotes. So that's basic features of that. But we see that x equals zero is the interesting danger zone and the sort of horizontal line here. All right. But look at this. I can think of this as really, okay, that's what I want to get to. I've got this version, y equals one over x. Great. But I don't want one over x, I really want y equals one over x minus one. So this is basically exactly the same expression, except here, x equals zero is the danger zone, whereas over here, x equals one is the danger zone. So actually, the graph of this one must be exactly the same as that one, but now with x equals one behaving like zero. So all the danger was happening at zero before, is now shifted over, happening x equals one. So I can sketch the graph of that thing instead. Aha! And now I'll draw this. It'll be the same shape. I wish I had enough board space, but I don't, sorry. But it'll be exactly the same shape as I had before, but now x equals one is behaving like zero, and everything else is just the same as it was before, and the graph must look like that for this one. Except I want three plus that. I want the graph of the thing I just have now, x minus one, plus an extra three. I want all my y values to be three higher than they were before. I want all these y values to be three higher than they were before. So actually, oh, common sense tells me, uh, hope you have that in your, burn in your brains. Now I have to rewind the video. I had x equals one behaving like zero. And now that horizontal line, all the, if all the y values are up three what they were before, everything's up three higher than it was before, and the graph is now three higher than it was before, and I must have a picture like this. And that must be a sketch of the graph, y equals, well, that thing, which is that thing, three x minus two over x minus one. Whoa, whoa, I guess I did it, I did it. I just did this, I engaged in wishful thinking. I wanted that to be negative three, I kind of made it happen. I dealt with the consequences. And I saw I was just dealing with a variation of that basic graph that I had in my head already, and I just used my common sense to work my way through it. Absolutely amazing. And if you need more details, for example, you want to where does it cross that actual y-axis, just put an x equals zero into that formula and figure it out. I guess if you need more detail, great. And actually, that was a great exercise, and you might want to check it with actually on Desmos. Do Desmos, does it give the same thing there? Find out, I bet it does. Good stuff.